That was one of the drinks I brought, right? Was it weed drink? Was it no, no, no. I, oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. I don't like that. <laughs> check, check, check. No these, comment. Check, please. Doing it. Check, Republic. Um, My lawyer yeah, I said. I was talking about Riot. How everyone was no. like super high off their asses that one day that they were drinking those weed sodas. Before right. we started, are you wanting to do the sort of Start with checking the social media. And, and well, I think we should start with there. checking in. I think we should. I have oh, some check, things I mean, to say. Yeah, I'm in the middle section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Middle section. I'd rather see what the questions were first before we and dive there's in. No, so are you guys okay with reading that from your phones? Yeah. You My phone is dead. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah, we, we're fine. Okay. We'll figure something out. <laughs> um, and then if that doesn't lead, I have a charger. Even if you. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, to the 2016 I don't Los think Angeles. So. More stuff in front of us, if possible. We can get rid of that. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna any drink other than water or Joe has some. Welcome to the 2016 Los Angeles Podcast Festival. It's our fifth year. And I was not drinking beforehand. Right, me neither. This is our first drink of the day. I was like, I told Joe, I was like, I'll wait till the last couple minutes of the show. No, no pre party, no. And Jamie was like, I'm already here at like six. Like, want to hang out? I was like, no. Absolutely not. No offense to you. I'll come 10 minutes before. I was not going to come early, but Andrew wanted to get here for the. Well, I, I'm just not, I don't have it in me to do small talk like this stuff. Mm -hmm. Especially with like. Start. I'm flashbacking already. Sixteen Los Angeles Podcast Festival. It's our fifth year, and that's fancy. And our third year with the live video stream. So that's like eight years if you don't understand math and time. Like every year, we are thankful we no longer have to deal with that stupid elevator at the Santa Monica venue. This podcast festival has turned into a community of people who come each year to see their favorite shows and to see each other again. We couldn't be happier we get to put this on. Five years ago, we were just podcasters trying to figure out this medium, and now here we are. We've created a podcast festival by podcasters for podcast fans. That's the way it should be. And we are able to do this every year because of our sponsors. Area for Life. Casper Mattress. Libsyn. Nixon Peabody. Pod X Ref. Satchel. 
Yeah. Spare men. Wondry. Please silence cell phones. No video recording with your cell phones, but you can take pictures. So Just really don't be annoying off. about it. I'm talking to you, Jeff. Now it's time for another podcast, live from the Los Angeles Podcast Festival. Yay! From the Sofitel Hotel in Beverly Hills, California, it's time once again for the long shot. Yeah! Tonight, who knows what will happen? And now, please welcome the host of the Long Shot, Sean Conrad! Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. That guy is great. I love that guy. Uh, I am Sean Conroy. I am the host of the Long Shot. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good night, good day, good dusk. With me today on the show... A woman who may or may not have been born in the United States. Amber Kenny is here. Hello. You know what? I'll finish it. She was born in the United States. I, I started it. it. He finished I'll it. I'll finish it. You know what we're talking Counterpoint, about. Counterpoint. She was not born in the United States of America. Uh, a guy who definitely needs to smile more. Joe Wagner is here. <clears throat> And a man who gets a whirlwind of emails every day and never deletes a one. Mr. Jamie Flam is here. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming out. Give yourselves a hand for being Whoa! here at the podcast festival. Or I should say the pod fest. We only use the first half of every word, right? Pod fest. Pod fest, right. Um, so I, I feel like I did a very good job of being politically relevant in my intros. I was going to say, I don't think... Jamie understood those references. Not a surprise. Not a surprise. I, I was in my own head uh, <laughs> thinking about other things, but um, are you I still didn't in explain the, it to confirm that I do, in fact, know. You do. Are you still in the 70s, by the way? Or the 80s now? <laughs> ah, a couple people listen to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Just testing the waters, folks. And, uh, of course, <laughs> in case you hadn't noticed... Uh, setting the tone for tonight's show is a single string of orange lights <laughs> provided by Mr. Jamie Flam. Happy Halloween. It's autumn. Happy and Halloween. It is September 23rd. <laughs> Jamie uh, texted... Jesus. Jamie texted Industrial Light and Magic just before the show. They came on down and put up these lights for us. So. Everyone will be handed a thing. Thanksgiving turkey on your way out. <laughs> and Santa Claus is around the corner if you want your picture taken with him. But can we at least acknowledge, like, we feel better as human beings in this room right now because of this light, that orange. It means something to us. It brings us back to childhood. Your teens. Uh, there seems to be mixed <laughs> feelings about that, Jamie. I need you to take my back on this, guys. I will say... Um, take your back? <laughs> The classic expression? The house was held. You guys couldn't enter because we had to figure out a way to get that orange And give it up for our team here who stepped up to the plate. Honestly, they are so kind. I would have just been like, no, yeah. I'm not putting that They're up. Really, yeah, this yes. does, it's not going to make a difference. Jamie walked in <laughs> with a string of lights and was like, can we hang these somewhere? Not sure how, but let's do it. No, I didn't even do that. I just started doing it on and my they own. Got and it, they were they like, got let's, totally we'll take got care it. of that. There's yeah. like twist tie, not twist tie. Zip ties. Guys, zip ties. Guys, it's hanging. <laughs> I I am a sucker for string lights. Especially orange, though. I don't for know me. about that. Yeah. I find orange lights hideous. <laughs> but that's just me. Well, uh, all right. Well, it's time for a segment on the show that we call Checking In. Let's start today with Jamie. Jamie, what's going on? Big week for me. I am... Um, who are you gesturing to? I don't know. I don't know how to react in general, let I alone. There was an people. audience over yeah. my shoulder for yeah. a second. That's a plant with <clears throat> big that is not pointy a plant. plants. <laughs> what would you call that? It's sticks. Sticks. It's, it's a, a bunch stick of sticks. Area. Go, uh, Go ahead, Jamie. What's bunch going on? A um, bunch of conductors were here earlier. <laughs> sticks. On when nope, nobody heard that episode. Okay. <laughs> Joe, easy with the callbacks. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I like going deep cuts for, for the podcast fans. You're still in the 70s. Sticks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See nice. what I did there? Yes. Killer Jamie, what's going on? 
On Wednesday, I slept until like 10 a.m. And my, thank you. It was great. I need sleep. I don't get enough sleep in my life. And I fucking... That oh was boy, definitely a stalling tactic. That was a stalling tactic. Fucking... I get a text from Vanessa, and she's like, come to the park. I'm there. She has a two-year-old child, Oliver. She's like, meet me it's at hers? the park. Hmm? It's her child? It's her child. Okay. And I was like, oh, I'm glad you're giving out as many personal details about That's Vanessa's his... family as you can. Anyway, she's a friend of mine. She invited me to go to the park with her two-year-old child. And I was like, yes, that sounds great. I'll get my steps in. Which at 10 a.m., I didn't think I was going to get my steps in. I'm addicted right. to getting steps if you've never listened to this podcast before. <laughs> and my steps right now are fucking insane. Like, the numbers that I'm reaching are just... By applause, how many people here have never listened to this podcast before? Great. Whoa. Do you know what it, uh, and how many people have listened to this podcast before? And when Jamie said, I got my steps in, inside your head, you were like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> or, conversely, you were like, man, it's a good guy up there. <laughs> More of a laugh than a clap, but I'll take what I can get. <laughs> Anyway. That's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good guy. He's getting his steps in. What a good guy. <laughs> He's one of the good guys. I'm a good man. Okay. I So then I, I walk outside, I throw some stuff on, brush my teeth, and then I'm out the door, and I, I have two steps. You threw some stuff on after you walked outside, by the way? No. Chronologically? Right. You threw some stuff bad. on first, then you went, yeah. You threw don't get stuff. dressed on, on, in your front yard. No. Right. No. You Good. were editing your own story like Inception. Like, <laughs> yes. this happened after this, and yeah. Okay. I was going for an Inception style story. Go on. Tactic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And so I, I open my door to go to the park. There's two steps that go up to a little kind of a porch. It's not like the kind of porch you would hang out on. It's not like a southern porch where you a would have landing. A, it's like a landing. A yeah. landing. A Thank landing. You, there's a landing in front of my house, and um, there's two steps, and there was a spider web. And not like a big Charlotte's Web style, uh, Charlotte's Web kind of thing, but uh, just two kind of strings, you know, like oh, like like almost like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at that. The universe creates and it gives. Right. Um, so there's these two spider webs. Don't know things. what that means. What a good guy. You are a good yeah. guy. <laughs> and so I take my key to kind of just break it. I didn't want to just you know go through the web. You and wanted to slice through with your key. But let it gently land. I didn't see a spider, but if right. there was one on there, let it kind of go down to its place, right. its area, its ground. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> go down to its area. <laughs> yeah. The web area. That's what like, you call Wee! spiders' places. I think you cut through its place. Well, the karma. Uh oh. Four seconds later, I'm on the ground. What? I don't even know, but there's two steps. But I didn't step down the two steps. I just stepped down to oh the first part God. without going on the steps. And my ankle. Ugh. My ankle. You were too busy with the precision destruction of the spider's area. It wasn't supposed to be destruction, but I think it was a fucking witch Halloween <laughs> spider. Uh -huh. And it put a curse on me immediately. And a I'm witch, on the ground. A witch spider. Wait. A spider witch. <laughs> <laughs> a spider witch put a spell on you. Yes. It's Jamie's favorite jazz song. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you sprained your ankle. Or you just twisted it. I thought I broke it, gang. Uh, I was on the ground. like I, it, was, it hurt really bad. I was like, this is a break. This is bad. I kind of pulled myself up, went into my living room, laid on the couch, went through all my options. This is a crisis scenario. What were some of your options? Yes. Just Here wait this options. out for a couple weeks. Right. Weeks. It was an option. <laughs> Another option was to wait it out for three weeks. Another option to wait it out for one week. I keep going week by week. There was an option. At where this I... point, you could have unlimited options. I know, yes, Jamie. A million weeks. But they all involve waiting it out. Yes. <laughs> so waiting yeah, it Jamie out. Jamie died on that couch <laughs> by sprained ankle. That's the worst way to die. He died no. by a sprained ankle. Well, oh, but you're dying on a couch. It's pretty comfortable. You're That's really true. dying of waiting it out at that point. Yeah. Lincoln style. I believe he died on a couch. Maybe it was a bed. Probably a bed. Okay. Yeah, but he, he was, was also shot in the head. Yeah. <laughs> I, he didn't have a sprained I, yeah. ankle. I, and I don't, think, I don't think it was waiting for that bullet in his yes. head. <laughs> I have a couple of choices here. I have four score and 20 choices. 
I could wait here for a week. So the other wait option here for a fortnight. The other option was to call my mom. It was a good Thanks. fortnight. Thanks. Fortnight, I believe, is thirty days, sixty days, no. twenty-two weeks, two weeks. <laughs> it's it's two weeks. Fourteen days. <laughs> Oh, is this? Yeah. By the way, this is like when you guys talk back to the podcast, right? When you're listening to it. I love this. this is my favorite part of the podcast. You can talk back to us. Joe, Except when I them. ask you to talk back to us. So what happened, Jamie? You, you decided to call your mother. Yes. Because that's what any adult man would do in that situation. I'm not 40 yet. I'll be 40 in just about a month. You know adulthood is 18. Yeah, I know. I'm on the, the slow track. <laughs> <laughs> so you Jamie called up Vicky the, Flam and the what did you say? Version. Vicky Flam said, I'll be right there because she's the best. And um, an hour Give later. It up for his mom. To be uh, fair, it, she lives an hour away. Like she, that's Yeah, no, no. <laughs> was, her timing was amazing. And so she, she drove me to the hospital. The hospital? I thought, it was, I, thought I broke it. Spoiler mm. alert, didn't break it. Mm -hmm. I Spoiler alert, I knew that. Because <laughs> I'm walking. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I, they got me in there. They checked it out. Oh, first I should say, I, they said it will be like a two-hour wait. So I got to wait. You had no options at that point. <laughs> no options. But at least you didn't have to make that decision. No, I knew it was going to be two hours. <laughs> right. And so um, we got some coffees. Me and my mom just hanging out. My mom's great and uh, talking about life where we're at where we're headed <laughs> just you and your mom hanging out in the emergency room talking about life urgent care which is there is a urgent difference. care okay. urgent care and you know we caught up which was nice just uh, hanging out with vicky and this is going nowhere <laughs> or is it going everywhere <laughs> i'm gonna say nowhere <laughs> i'm gonna say so what happened between. jamie so you're sitting there talking with your mom Give us an example of the significant conversation you had. Um, talking about next steps in my life, you know, I feel I'm at a crossroads. <laughs> I, uh, if you haven't listened to the podcast, uh, what I've is been at a crossroads. Right I don't know. It's There's so a really weird, weird synergy happening. Do do Have you show? ever not been at a crossroads? <laughs> I think that's why people are reacting. I'm perpetually at crossroads. <laughs> You live in the middle of an intersection. There's a blue singer everywhere I go. <laughs> Robert Johnson reference for some of you. Mm -hmm. When I was like 11 years old, I got into Robert Johnson. He's like an old blues guy. And they put out a box set. And in those days, there were box sets. Instead of like, you just go to iTunes now, but you would get a box set. So there was a two-CD box set. I would see it at the warehouse or Sam Goody or whatever it was. And I was like... I got to get this because Led Zeppelin and all these like classic rock bands would always yeah. be like, oh, the Rolling Stones, like Robert Johnson, you know, like uh, he inspired me in so many ways. Like, oh my God, that sounds so much like that was um, uh, Keith Richards yes. mm -hmm. before all the partying got to him. <laughs> He's a notorious partier. Okay, um, but I got this two CD set. My favorite thing are your self footnotes. <laughs> you keep interrupting yourself. Oh and going, right. In those days, they had. Uh, Go CD ahead. box sets. But I'm 11 or 12 years old and I get this box set. And it's like this old blues guy. And I'm excited because he inspired so many of the greats. Rolling right. Stones, Led Zeppelin, and um, so many others. And so I get the, the CDs, but it was a little too sophisticated for my palate. At You're just point. saying you didn't like it. It was just like every single song. Like It was like 80 songs per CD. And there was, it was like, you know, right. Were you more at blues, a, this like a blues. blues Brothers phase or something like that? No. Okay. But this is very different than the Blues Brothers. This is like like if you if you skip But if you skip through every song, it was like that exact like there's like four takes of every song too, which I didn't get like why would I listen to each one? I appreciate it now. That's why you have a box set. Somebody in the audience just pointed out that you got a box set, and that's what happens in a box set, you get everything. Right. Argu it's the point arguably, of a like, box set. this was at a time in history where you wouldn't just get one Robert Johnson CD. I don't think that was available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not going to buy a single. They're they're definitely not Robert Johnson singles out at that point. Right. This is like you know early '90s. Anyway, I forgot why I went to the Robert Johnson tangent. 
You were I'd, talking to your mother in the emergency room. Because you're at a crossroads. At a crossroads, okay. right. Anyway. And you I, uh, fell because you I didn't fall, destroyed no. the spider area. You were area. cursed by a spider. I was cursed by a spider. A spider witch. <laughs> a spider right. witch cursed you. Moving right. forward, I get in the doctor's room, and the doctor's like, I don't really. Was read. it a doctor? It was a doctor. Okay. They, and he said, um, <laughs> he said, um, I'm not very good at reading x-rays, but it uh, looks to me like there's no So fractures. he was not a competent that? doctor. That was said to me. And I'm so, not sure what these blood pressure numbers mean, <laughs> and you might not have a pulse. That, that's an instance where you bluff, right? Yeah. yeah. No, you yeah. would never. There's, that, that's bad bedside manner. Yeah. I am not good at my job. <laughs> But right. here's what I think about your medical condition. Right. I paid $25 for that copay. <laughs> did you pay or did your mom pay? I paid. I paid. Okay, so, so what happened? What did he say? He looked at the x-ray. He said, I'm not good at this, but... I don't see any fractures, so it's probably a sprain. And so I was like, okay, great. And then he left, and the nurse came back in. I was like, the, the, the other doctor said that he wasn't confident in x-rays. Could I get a... Doctor that's confident. You immediately went for the second opinion. Nice. Yes. Good. Yes. Take God charge. One, came one in. applause. Thank you. Yes. 20 minutes later, another doctor corroborated what the first doctor had said. Ah. Did you believe him or did you ask for a third opinion? Well, he gave some more opinion. Apparently, I had broken, I had fractured my foot at some point and not taken care of it. He's like, oh, I there see was some. an old fracture. Yeah. Oh. That's what happens when you get too many steps. Yeah. I honestly think, I don't know, it's the spider or just overstep it. Mm -hmm. Or the curse. It was a curse. So what did you do after that? <laughs> <laughs> the, the rest of the week, I've been in my head. So in the last episode of our podcast, I talked about wanting to conduct an orchestra. Uh -huh. And then I, I felt I got the support of most people, but then there's been kind of a rallying against me as a conductor. A and little bit. Well, little. somebody there made was, the point yeah, on the internet. Fair point. That totally fair Because you point. you put a time limit on it. You right. said within a year I will be conducting an orchestra, <laughs> and somebody said people work their whole lives to do this thing, right. and you are sort of cheapening it. Now I can see both sides of that argument. Sure. And it was one person. It wasn't a rally. And he was great. And I, I, I it was a good point. Yeah, it was, was a valid super, point. It was a very valid like, point. Sure. But um, it. It was well Yeah, he didn't call you planned. a piece of shit or anything. No. But then people called him a piece of shit, which I thought was uncomfortable. Yes, yes, I agree. Well, that, was where it got, get... that was where it got inter uncomfortable on the internet. Yeah. Intercomfortable, I like to call That's it. That's because people love you so much, Jamie, that yeah. coming to your defense, they just wanted to rip this guy yeah, a new one. By the way, I will say that within a year, I will be giving my opinion on people's x-rays of their ankles. <laughs> And I'll take and it. I was going to do a second beat, and it was going to be that, ah, unfortunately. You should have done it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for late. stepping on that. But that whole um, going back and forth, right. A, it did remind me that i got to work harder in life and um, to achieve. I, I want to do big <laughs> things. Does anything that happens in your life not cause you to have an existential crisis? <laughs> no. <laughs> it sucks. I want to have a weekend without an existential crisis. I tripped over a spider web and sprained my ankle. I need to work harder in life. I'm very hard on myself. Uh, but it did... And then so I've been watching Am Amadeus, which is a three-hour movie the director's got on Netflix. It's uh, a good movie. Great movie. They put in a bunch of extra scenes. Why do they do that? Because you got the director's cut. Right. <laughs> Amadeus won Oscars, if you aren't aware, in 1985. Mm -hmm. And... 85, I was like nine years old. So watching the Oscars when you're nine, you're like, oh, my deus, why isn't... It's not the Ninja Turtles or whatever. Well, yeah. The Ninja <laughs> Turtles is a good movie. <laughs> Yet Amadeus, which is like old people doing old things. And being boring. And being boring, and it's so good. But I'm not saying I could be Mozart in the right. air. I... Really? <laughs> However, you don't think so? However. Right. Somebody was writing full classical music pieces... <laughs> At the age of four, and you don't think you could be him in a year? Not there. But you know what? I, I just wanted to make sure I get this on tape for this podcast, for this live podcast in front of people. I'm looking at people in the eye. I want to conduct. <laughs> like, in my heart of hearts, I want to conduct an orchestra. And I'm going to start slowly. Like, there is a witch laughing in here right now. Yeah. That was a cackle. It was a very distinct. <laughs> don't, please don't call our fans witches. I know. That was mean. 
But that was like it was like very. Did spider witch I did come see, tonight? Yeah, I did see a Halloween spider run out the back. Yeah. Um. So you're gonna conduct an orchestra? How long? Two weeks? No, I. No. You have a more specific vision. It isn't yes. like conducting an orchestra. It's like basically curating a show, and there'll be music involved, and you'll be. You're. It's more Ricky Ricardo than right. conductor. It, in right? the short term, Ricky yes. Ricardo was a band leader, That's not a saying. conductor. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like it's a comedy show that he will be doing the music right. for. Right, right. And you want to Like Doc Severinsen. Should, maybe you should answer. <laughs> no, band leader is good. In the short term, I want to be a band leader. But right. I do have the, the makings of a 15 to 20 year plan to conduct He's trying to help. a 100 piece orchestra. <laughs> You're just trying to lower <laughs> expectations. And he's like, yeah, I do want to do that. But I also want to do this other... No, there's 100. a long term plan to conduct an orchestra. But in the right. meantime, I do want to lead bands... And um, I, you all, were, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> 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 that is my checking in. Thank you very much. Jamie Flam, everybody. Jamie Flam. Thank you. Uh, next, let's go to me. Yeah, unusual, I know. I love the gasps. Um, that's how I feel. <laughs> well, I just wanted to say I went home last weekend. I flew home on Friday night, got in on Saturday morning, Went to a surprise birthday party for my father's 80th birthday on Saturday afternoon and flew back on Sunday afternoon. No. Sunday, yes, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. How Sunday, was the Sunday. party? The party was great. It was great. Uh, he was totally surprised. The only problem was to get him out of the house because we couldn't do anything to set up until he was gone. Right. So to get him out of the house, two of my brothers and seven of their kids took him to the movies and then to the playground. So he was out of the house for four and a and half exhausted. hours. Yeah. So he's 80 years old. So he comes home and all he's thinking, and I said this to people before he got home, I was like, I know he's just going to want to go <laughs> lie down for a little while and just collect himself. Right. And he walked in and he was happy to see everybody. But the first thing he said was like, I thought I'd just be able to go upstairs and take a nap. <laughs> and not a chance of that happening. And he hung in there. I mean, he was he was there until midnight. We, wow. you know, this party started at five thirty, and he kept going until midnight. Uh, but I just wanted to tell a quick anecdote about an incident at the party. Mm. So I made a speech because I'll do that once in a while. Uh, it was very well received because I'm a professional, very good at it. Yeah. Yes, and uh, <laughs> this one guy came up to me afterwards. He is the husband of a childhood friend of my father's. So my father used to babysit for this woman when they were little kids. She's now about 70. Her husband is 85. And he came up to me after I gave the speech, and he was like, so you work in Hollywood? And I was like, yes. And he's like, you do comedy? And that's always a <laughs> bad question. Right. I go, yes. Charged. And he goes, I got a joke for you. You can yeah. use this. Yeah. yeah. But it's great. It's great because he, this is what he said. He goes, he goes, first he goes, here, hold my drink. He gives his drink to his wife. She's like, what? You can't tell a joke while you're holding a drink? <laughs> and he's like, she's just, the funny one. She's, he's like, just hold it. Just hold it. He goes, okay, this little guy, little guy, little, little guy, little guy. So he's using one hand. He could have held his drink the whole time. <laughs> little guy comes out of a restaurant. As he comes out of the restaurant, restaurant, somebody hits his car. Somebody hits his car when he comes out of the restaurant. And he walks over. Little guy walks over. The guy's much bigger than him. <laughs> he was obviously talking about a little person. <laughs> and he says, he says, you hit my car. And the little guy says, you know, I'm, I'm upset about this. And the guy says, I, I apologize. It was an accident. And the little guy says, I'm not happy. And the bigger guy says, which one are you? Which one are you? And then he just looks at me. And his wife goes, no, no, it's which one are you? Like, I'm not happy. Which one are, are you? you? Like, he's one of the seven dwarves. <laughs> But the best part was, she goes, no, 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 it's which one are you? And he goes, what did I say? Like, he didn't even... <laughs> I thought he was asking you if you were the little guy or the no, big guy. No, 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 no. Maybe it should be, which dwarf are you? Halfway dwarf? Dwarf. <laughs> Single dwarf. <laughs> Halfway through that, I started thinking of the little guy as Jamie. 
Uh huh. And then when he said, I'm not happy, I'm like, oh, it is Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was what, that's I'm like sorry. what you would say. It happens. Which yeah. one, no, no, no. Like, which I'm not one happy. are you? Which one are you? No, no, it's which one are you? <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> Yeah, I love that guy. Um, and and then, he's here tonight. Come on down, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and then the only Classic. other thing I wanted to mention was that I went to watch... I, I was at the airport on the way home on Sunday, and the Giant game was on. And I went to watch the game in this bar. And for some reason, they had a flat-screen TV, but for some reason, the reception was not good. Like, they didn't have the high-def reception on or something. Which, whatever. I'm in the airport. I'm not going there to watch the game. So it's not like... So this guy comes in and sits down next to me and immediately engages me in how upset he is that they're not showing it in high def. He's like, they're not showing it in high def? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you Which kidding one are me? you? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's like when you're at the post office and somebody turns around and goes, can you believe how fucking long this yeah, line is? Yeah, and I it's can. Like, I've yeah, been to the post right? office before. You got to yeah. expect that on your way there. Right. Expect that when you go to watch a game at the airport, there's going to be a problem. And so 12 seconds after he sat down, engaged me in the thing, yelled at the bartender as if we were together. I'm not happy! He left to go to a different place <laughs> to watch the game. Oh. So I thought that was, uh, <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Uh, all right, Joe, checking in. I feel like Jamie wrote the ending of that story. The guy left. <laughs> the guy left. Well, the ending was not the good part. The good part was the beginning when he comes in right. and engages me. But so. the good thing was that he left and you didn't have to deal with it. I anymore. could have just left off at the beginning of the story. I could have said, he came in, he sat down next to me. He was like, what the fuck is going on? Anyway, Joe, check it in. <laughs> but that would have felt had incomplete. An yeah. no, it had not an ending. Not good story time. Uh, all right. So right. as uh, some listeners know, there's a tradition now that I started last year. Yes. That's a two-year yeah. tradition. Yeah, sp uh, somebody specifically on our Facebook fan page made sure to say, buy some moonshine again from the CVS across the street. Did you guys know that you can buy moonshine at a drugstore that's right across the street? And <laughs> I feel like that's too not the many good people moonshine. in the audience said yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's where I get all my moonshine, at the drugstore, CVS. So, uh, once again, this is the Firefly brand. Is it Excuse flavored? Me. Is it because they make like apple? This is this is flavored. So this year, last year was just white lightning, your traditional moonshine from a drugstore, and this is apple pie flavor. Oh. So autumnal. And if anybody, if anybody in the audience wants a taste, there's plastic cups back there. You can grab a plastic oh, cup. Oh, and by the way, there's candy and popcorn. And there's candy and popcorn that. Don't Jamie be shy. Um, yeah, let's. Mention Anything? that now so people can come up and get it. D don't awkwardly the walk through the these show. lights oh, to grab yeah. uh, some popcorn. They Maybe did we last pass year. it around. They did last year. We oh, should. no, it's over there. Pass it we around. Should. Pass, yeah, pass, pass the candy. It. Pass so, it. Joe, you bought moonshine. Anything else going on? <laughs> nope. <laughs> um, can I have a tiny bit? So, yes. So, I got a haircut. The candy today. is making its way through the audience. <laughs> Very exciting. People get so excited about little pieces of candy. They really do. Cheers. I'd like to make a toast. This is basically my one-year anniversary with the Lo Show oh. Po. Yeah. We need some for Sean. And uh, it's been a real pleasure. We'll Joe, see. of course, was a super fan of the show before he started hosting with us, for anybody who doesn't know. And uh, I'd like to thank the, my fellow co-hosts for all the fun so far and all the fans for listening. Thank you so much. Here's to the next year. Here, here. Apple pie. It tastes like apple pie. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. yeah. Go grab. Here's a cup. This guy Bart is gonna have the first shot, and Bart already has become a part of my. <laughs> Come on up, guys. <laughs> We're bartending now at this point. This oh, is a. Thank you. This is a. Oh, thank you. We're getting bum rushed here on the stage. <laughs> Everything is so weird about right now. If you can't see us right now, it's because a line is formed. So much. Bart is just said this is totally surreal because he can't believe he's drinking moonshine with the Low Show Po crew. We have a show going on right now. The show is not stopped. I would love to see what this looks like live stream. <laughs> uh, so Joe, you got a haircut today. Tell us about. I got that. a haircut today, and guys, <laughs> thanks for acknowledging in any way that I got a haircut today. I did? 
No, I, I know that I said it. These guys. Uh, Wait, are you mad at them for not saying anything about your haircut? Yeah, like when. Like collectively as a group, like Joe, nice hair. Hey, I got a haircut today. <laughs> There it goes. Yeah, I, 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 I'm yes, not trying to be sexist want. here, but <laughs> when, uh, especially I think when women get their hair cut or styled, they want some acknowledgement of that. Am I, ladies, am I wrong in this? Not trying to be sexist, but women do this. <laughs> <laughs> Though this is something I've noticed through the years. Am I wrong? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> no and yes are the two things I heard. I'm gonna go with the yes. Um, I would like to book you for the Hollywood Improv. And I just, I had, I had the experience today where uh, I went. That was really funny. <laughs> yeah, but it was late. It was too late for right. people to understand I mean, I what did it was miss, a reference to. I did to. miss the right time. I didn't even hear it. Jamie said, um, I would like to book you for the Hollywood Improv. And that was because you said women do this and men oh, do this. Oh, I see, I see, I see. That's the laugh factor. Um... Oh, whatever. Why am I taking digs at clubs? I'll never be at. So, uh, <laughs> so I got this haircut Take today, and I two. went. I went to one of those, you know, one of the juju ja ja hipster places. Floyd's. Floyd's. I went to the Floyd's in downtown. <laughs> and he lost focus. I lo I love that our two biggest fans are having a conversation. This is like full on conversation. <laughs> this is insane. We have gotten two of our fans so fucking wasted. That they are having a full conversation during my check-in. They're actually speaking as I'm speaking right now. It's still Without happening right now. In a, in, a, in, a way, in a way where I almost feel like this is a prank in the show. front row. This is insane. <laughs> if these guys are actors, they are fucking earning their keep <laughs> right now. <laughs> they, I mean, there's not... This, this guy, is, this this is guy scared the shit out of me in the hallway the way he looked at me because he was like... It looked like he was seeing Jesus, and he's talking. Oh, Jesus said, oh, it sounds like they're talking to me. No, see, now if I get soft, they're going to. I'm going to let you ride this one out, Joe. This is insane. This is incredible. Classic long shot, though. Classic, yeah, classic long, long shot. shot. I don't think any other podcast at this festival has fans that are going to dissect the show in the front row. Front row! Front row! <laughs> During the insane. show. This is what this I is deal with every night. This. <laughs> He's wearing a shirt with our faces on it. Our faces are on his shirt. This is crazy. This is unbelievable. <laughs> so I mean, anyway. there, are two, there are two giant bright lights on us, right? You can see us. Can you see us? Yes. Guys. 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 Thank you. <laughs> they just looked at Sean like he's the teacher he's always been. Like you got caught. They did get caught. They look so you look so guilty right now. I can't wait. I can't wait for you to hear this episode. <laughs> this isn't <laughs> All right. So Joe, Joe, tell no, us no, he can't listen to my shit. Tell, um, us, tell us about the. Tell us I, the I, I had a haircut, but I just, it, it, <laughs> that's. There's nothing better than what just happened. Right. During that. All right. So I couldn't. I couldn't really describe it that well. She was frustrated, but then I was like, just do it. Whatever. It's hair. And then this Wait, is what why was, she was she frustrated by? Okay. So when I when my hair grows longer, it gets it's very curly. curly in the back. Yeah. It's yes, very it gets, sweet. It's like yes. baby curls. Thank you. Yeah. It's curly and. I think it's kind of wild. They're still talking, which is great. And um, and and I wanted to try to keep some of the curls, but go real short on the sides, like clipper on the sides, keep some of the curls because I I I fell in love with my own curls, because when you don't have it on top, but it comes party out in the, the back, back, business in the front. Well, that's the thing. She goes, wait. So do you want some kind of mullet? like mullet? And I was like, well, no, no, I don't want a mullet. She was like more of a faux, like a faux hunk. I, I don't like, want it. I, I need it. I, <laughs> I, 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 I need to need it. No, I, I said I, something between the two. So we both called it a fullet. And then, yeah, right? Sounds gross. Um, and that's what... I, I didn't see it before, but you do have a fullet. Yeah. 
Because there's still a little bit of thickness there's in the little, back. It's got the little... Turn around fully. Like you've got a duck's butt in the back. They want I don't want to show off my duck's butt. <laughs> Search ducks with big butts on Google. <laughs> right. And you'll find it. You'll anyway, find I, I feel haircut. great. I feel great to have a haircut. Thanks, everybody. Joe Wagner, folks. Joe <laughs> Wagner. And finally, the first lady of the podcast, Amber Kenny. What's going on with you? Um, <laughs> you guys. They're overcompensating I, um, now. I, I'm going to start with my fear about this mm. because I figured that's probably the best way. Is um, I'm going to talk about something serious, and I typically as a defense mechanism lighten things up and I'm scared that people will think that it isn't important to me or it hasn't affected me so that's a fear of mine right. and another fear of mine is that I'm going to be too much of a bummer or too dramatic so I'm just saying I just took the which air one are you like, which one um, are you but I just I'm just <laughs> saying that out loud so that that's there and there's the honesty but um shit is about to get real uh, folks <laughs> it is my Dad had emergency heart surgery a week ago today, um, and I've been blessed enough to not spend any time in a hospital. I haven't seen either of my parents hospitalized right. before, um, so it's been a rough two weeks. Um, see, ah, I'm such a bummer, but I can't not talk about it. No, It'd be of weird course not. To not talk about it. Um, this is the long shot. Sometimes. We go down, sometimes we go up, That's sometimes right. we stay in the middle. For years. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> and if you take it down, we'll at some point, well, we'll see. We might not. But no, but I mean. it's like, uh, um, so my dad was in the States because it's too hot in Mexico right now, but also I've learned past tense because he's been having some like heart palpitations that he was freaked out about. So he went to the doctor. Uh, and he got a stress test, and he failed. That is stressful. Um, he, he. I'm gonna keep doing that. <laughs> uh, he, apparently, he said that everyone in the room freaked out except him. He kept walking on the treadmill, and they called the ambulance. Because he had no stress, that's why he failed. Yeah. Um, and so they took him in an ambulance to the emergency room, not to like bite your. Well, Checking he only in. went to urgent care, not the emergency room. Uh, but it's still and, kind of my thing. And, um... Sorry. <laughs> he so called Jamie's mom to take him to the emergency <laughs> room. She would do it. She's, she's a blessing. So he was in the emergency room, and I happened to call my mom that night. She wasn't planning on telling me any of this. Right. Because my brother told me to... Told her to not tell me me anything till we had the test results back. We were still thinking that he was going to get an angiogram. There was like a little block. They were going to get it in the mm -hmm. during the angiogram. He was going to go home like yippee skippy. No such luck. But I called and my mom um, is hippy dippy enough to be like she's picking up on something that's going on. I got to tell her what's going on. And so I said I, I could go right now. I could go to the hospital. And she was like no, no, no. And I believed her, and then the next morning I talked to her and I talked to my dad, and they both were like, no, don't come here. And I was just like a mess at work, and my boss was like, you go. Like, don't listen to them. Right. And both of them were so happy I was there, and we just spent the whole day waiting for him to get the angiogram. And he was miserable because he couldn't eat. He was prepped to do the angiogram the evening before, and then first thing in the morning, and then... Right. The afternoon, so like you can't eat or drink that whole time. So he was just miserable for not eating and drinking. This is like when Lincoln was dying; they wouldn't let yeah. him eat or drink. They were like, <laughs> "No." Um. Anyway, oh god, this makes me feel like fucking shit. What I'm about to say, but I'm gonna be truthful with everyone. Um, mm -hmm. I had tickets to see Beyonce that night. Oh, no. Um. <laughs> is that a is that a singer dancer? What is she? So my, both my parents are like, you have to go. Like, the test is going to be any minute now. This is the best existential crisis of all time. <laughs> so I left. I left the hospital, and I went to see Beyonce. And <laughs> Wait, that's what we're cheering? <laughs> um, and 
But I was like exhausted. I felt so bad because all of my friends were so pumped, and I didn't want to be a bummer. But I was just you didn't like, tell anybody. No, I told people, but oh, you I, did. I wasn't like gonna make it a thing. Mm. Like I did had one on one conversations. Guys, guys, we can well, go to the concert, but we have to not have a good time. Well, and I, wa- and I well, wasn't she- gonna be like. <laughs> Hey, everybody, yeah. just so you know, like, I would right. have one-on-one comments. Amber had a big sign that said, my dad just had a heart attack. No, well, well and, and my dad had just had a heart attack, but this is how much we are medical dummies. None of us knew that my dad had just had a heart attack. Had a ha- right, right. We just thought, like, something bad happened, and right. they took him to the hospital, and he was, like, we honestly didn't know he had a heart Which attack. is not incorrect. Right. <laughs> it's just heart attack is more specific um, than something bad. So I went to the Beyonce concert, and I was like, exhausted. Like, hospitals are exhausting, even if you're not doing anything. I don't know. If you- <laughs> hospitals are bummers. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> really thinking outside the box. No, but I, 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 you know, um, as somebody who has spent time in right. hospitals, yes, you were right to go, because it's the worst. Yeah. Just sitting there with right. nothing to do. And when people show up, it is very, like... I guess moving is not the right word, but you're oh, you're like oh, thank fucking god, right. Amber's here. Even for twenty minutes, it makes a difference, you know. Five minutes, no difference. Yeah, you got to get to the ten minute mark. So um, <laughs> I went to Beyonce, <clears throat> and during uh, bless her heart, because I asked for updates, but did she do crazy right now? Sh- she did. Um, yeah. Did she do put a ring on it? She didn't. Oh, and I, fuck I don't that know show. Why. <laughs> Um, but halfway through the concert, I happened to look at my phone, and my mom texted me, Dad needs full bypass surgery. Love you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, my God. God. So awesome. I was um, <clears throat> distracted the rest of the concert. And yeah. I also, again, being medical dummy, I was thinking, oh, okay, so he'll have surgery in like two weeks, three weeks, a month. Um, I talked to my mom the next day, and she's like, oh, surgery's tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And the angiogram showed that he had one artery that was completely blocked, and all the rest were just mostly blocked. So he's got no oxygen, no blood. Right. Like he's gonna be feeling so much better now. Right, right, right. That's like great. the fact that he's done as much as he has. Like who knows how long this has been going on. But um, so the surgery was on Friday a week ago. T- today and i spent the whole day there with my mom again both my mom and dad were like you don't need to be here it's a bummer and i'm like (laughs) if i don't come now when do i come but But also that's why you need to be there because it is a bummer right you know right 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 and my poor mom you're there for them not for you so much yeah yeah uh, but you had tickets to rihanna that day (laughs) 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 i listen Uh, i listen to what the kids listen to (laughs) um and Everything was later, kind of to your point, everything was later than the timetables they gave us. So they said the surgery would be four to six hours. And I kept saying, Ma, give it eight hours. Like, I just didn't want her to have, like, a full-on panic attack at hour six. Right. But it was, like, three hours and 50 minutes to the minute. That's too short. Oh, no. (laughs) Um, So it was quick, and the surgeon felt really confident about it. Bob, I think we're going to knock off 10 minutes early tonight. Is that okay with you? (laughs) That was my impression of a doctor. Yeah, yeah, right, Bob. Such a suave guy. What a piece of shit. Hey, you know what? I'm not very good with x-rays. Let's get out of here. I know know we're not off until 5, but it's 4.50. Let's get the fuck out of (laughs) here. Well, it wasn't at Fort whatever. Um, oh, I was just making up numbers. <laughs> uh, so the surgery went well, ba ba ba. Ba ba ba. The next day, I had like an audition, a rehearsal, a baby shower to go to, and I'm so dumb. True. <laughs> that no, but I just. I needed someone to tell me, like, to, like, tackle me and be like, don't do stuff. Because I was like, well, I said I was going to do it, so I do it. And there's no physical reason for me not to do it. And I, I'm not at the hospital. The surgery isn't happening. So I, like, woke up, had breakfast, like, showered, got dressed, put on makeup, picked up my car keys, and, like, fell on the floor crying. I was like, I can't fucking do any of this shit. Did you go outside before you got dressed? Uh. <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay. Um, and, and then I was like, am I, like... I have such paranoia about am I being overdramatic? And right. Jeff 
is an angel from heaven. He just like rolled me. I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> he has a show tonight or he'd be here. Mm -hmm. um, he just like rolled me in blankets and rubbed my head and was like, you thought your dad was going to die yesterday. Like, go easy on yourself. Right. And I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> That's nice. And we went and bought a bunch of books for him. And uh, for Jeff, what? No. What books? Some chicken soup we, series. Jeff bought the books, which is uh -huh. really sweet. Baseball books and rock and roll from the '60s books, because we wanted stuff that wasn't a bummer on any level, you know. Like <laughs> right. And, and this and the Suicide Squad adaptation. Uh, well, <laughs> then I'm so sorry. We're gonna be done with this soon. Um, then certainly hope My so. dad <laughs> wasn't getting enough oxygen. And the, the, the hospital didn't have enough? <laughs> no, that's what happened to Schwarzenegger in Total Recall. When they put him out on the yeah, surface of Mars. Eyes he didn't, get, yeah, your he didn't eyes get, get all big. Yeah, yeah. Oxi Mars doesn't have any oxygen. That's why he didn't get enough. Right. Zero is not enough. Mm. Um, Thank you, Dr. Dunway. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm going to knock off 10 minutes So they were doing the... He was, <laughs> he was supposed... Like, the last time I saw him after the surgery, he was just fully sedated and... Yeah. Um, ventilator down his throat and he was supposed to be off that the evening of the surgery and then like walking around Saturday <clears throat> he wasn't getting enough oxygen so he stayed on the ventilator till Tuesday night which is kind of a long time also fucks you up because it fucks up your th the inside of your throat it's very painful Right. to be on a respirator and he's not able to communicate with us and because it was so painful and he was he was almost fully sedated so he was basically post-op saturday sunday monday and most of tuesday mm. um so it, it's been a scary week anyway he got off the ventilator on tuesday and i and uh I was there, and that was another day that my mom's like, you don't need to come. And as soon as I came, she like lit up. Right. Um, of course. It's been, ugh. I'm so gross with the silver linings, and I apologize. But um, it's been actually kind of nice to spend so much time with my mom alone. Like, it's been years since it hasn't, it's always been, we spend time as a three-person unit. We don't do like, Mother daughter outings, and now I'm thinking we should. Start. I've never done one of those, right. but um, so so like weird, it's, is this a weird time to bring up? I haven't been at the improv in a while, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a weird time, Dave. <laughs> is that know, Dave? Why do you know that this isn't Dave? <laughs> Come Dave, we already talked on, about this. Dave's dude. not here, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a it little is bit weird. of a weird time. But yeah. back to your death. How long has Joe been on this podcast? Oh, Jesus. A year. A year. We one just toasted year. his one year we anniversary. And He's on the t-shirt. People are happy Stand I'm up. on the t-shirt. That's Joe. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> no, you guys keep, I guess, doing what you're doing then. <laughs> Bumming people out with medical that, stories. That sounded very doubtful. <laughs> I'm failing the Dave Anthony stress test no, right I'm now. I'm pulling the band back so far when we go back to comedy it's gonna be hilarious right 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 um but i thought a lot of this was hilarious <laughs> but uh but yeah he's off the ventilator now oh no nobody wants that <laughs> oh no um, i can you guys wait till i start drinking <laughs> <laughs> so he's doing better everyone's fucked he's up he's off the ventilator festival. he's so eating solid up. food. He walked down the hall yesterday for the first time. So he's like finally making progress. It was just fucking scary when he was not making now, progress. Now, can I ask? You don't know how long that's going to be. Can I ask rude, specific questions? Yeah. Did they have to open his chest to do Thank this? You. They yeah, did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And did they have to go in through his groin with stuff to do it? Um, they did the angiogram through his arm, mm -hmm. but they took veins out of his leg for the bypass. So he's got a lot going on. Yeah. No, yeah. he's mm -hmm. he got hit by a truck, basically. Right. right. So walking is good. No, yeah, he walked That's down the hall deal. yesterday. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah, give Rich Kenny a hand. And, uh, what about a plug? Mexico's dad. So I was there when they took the ventilator out. This is like a fun nugget. 
I was there when he took the ventilator out. You got to keep the ventilator. No. They... <laughs> she had to break it with somebody else and see who got to keep the she bigger to... part. She bit the ventilator tube with her mouth. <laughs> they, they said he still can't talk for several hours because he's had a ventilator in there for so long, right. to your point, right. that we didn't want his throat to become inflamed, and right. then he can't breathe anyway. So he still couldn't talk. But um, the ventilator... Ventilator came out, the nurse left, and he the first thing he says, the one thing he says that he's allowed to say, it wasn't like, I love you. <laughs> it was, what the fuck is that painting? <laughs> and it made me so happy. I was like, he's going to be okay. Right. Like, we're fine. He's still a snub. Right. Hospitals not known for their artwork. Also, for though, me. it turned out it that I contained. think it was the angle it was. There was a glare on it, and he literally couldn't figure out what it was. And that must have been infuriating to him. It is a bowl of fruit. It was a terrible painting. Mm -hmm. But I was just like laughing. He's probably in pain. But I was just like, it is a bad painting, Dad. It is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about another hand for Amber's dad? <laughs> Getting himself back together. Can I make a quick plug for another fun nugget? Sure. Uh, Hershey's makes uh, nug nuggets. Um, they're not your typical just candy bar. Um, they come in a bag usually. They're small, yes. nugget size. <laughs> right. Don't know how to act with these two. <laughs> they throw me through a loop. Um, you know Jamie's having a stroke right now. Yeah. You know that's why he does that funny voice. How much yeah. have you had to drink I can't move tonight. any of this out of my body. What? How much have you had to drink tonight? Not that much. We um, were pre-gaming. We pre <laughs> By the way, I just want to say real quick, I can't believe that these two fans up here talked all from my haircut story <laughs> And then listened respectfully to Amber's Can you checking imagine? in. I well, like, I about her father having. I would have thrown the serious, mic down. I, I would have like, I would have like done some mama bear bullshit. I know, right? To be fair, there was a little more depth to her story. Well, then there, I got a haircut. Well, that, that's a. There were sharp. But to be fair, they were talking through mine too. There was a whole moment during the spider web thing where I was like, spider web twice. Because I, I couldn't hear. I know. Well, so I to be make fair, that clear. everybody has now said to be <laughs> no, fair. To be fair, they normally listen to the podcast and we're not right, here. Right, they can do whatever they want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is how uh, this right, happened well, last let's year, let's do this too. now. We, we, we now... Are we, are we done? No, no, no. We're not oh, done. Oh, shit. No. Um, we were going we to talk about questions Fuck. that we got on social media. Do we have any of those? Ugh. Did anybody ask questions on let's social media? Let's check in. Check do we have, do people have Andrew, <laughs> are you on line at all? No, don't say that to Andrew. He was having a panic attack about doing this for us. Oh, and I promised him we well. could Andrew do it ourselves. Andrew might be passed out back there. No, he's fine. Right. Andrew's the best. Give it, Give it up for our producer, yeah. Andrew, everybody. <laughs> he really whipped us into shape this year. Um, Sean, if you could give any tattoo to Jamie, what would you choose plus where? Jamie, how would you tattoo Sean? Great question. I, I mean, would tattoo a crossword. Uh, sorry. I would tattoo a crossroads on Jamie's taint. Oh, which way are you going to go? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how too late. <laughs> Whoa. How would you tattoo Sean? Um, I, too late. I would uh, also want his asshole. Um, I would use. The, I said nothing about asshole. <laughs> I would use the, right on the his butthole asshole. to be one of the O's in the two, T O O. Of too late, much too late for goodbyes, a song by Julian Lennon, son That's of right. John. <laughs> so your tattoo for me would have nothing to do with me. <laughs> That's fair. All right. Or I have another one. This one is from John Michael Cooper, one of my best friends in the world. And yeah, John friend Michael. Of the podcast. Um, he says, "What is your routine slash peeve?" for TV slash movies. Do you like going to movies or prefer the couch? Popcorn slash butter slash candy with other peeps. Wait, what was the first thing? What is your what? I don't get the peeve thing, and maybe it's a typo, but I think he just wants to know, like, what's your ritual for movies? Uh-huh. Go ahead. <laughs> Joe? It's an, it's an open... I, I go, and I buy my ticket, I sit down... I like it. <laughs> I face the classic. Box. Every time, every time I've gone to see a movie, I'm facing the screen, and then uh, I usually stay for the credits, and then I leave. I um, 
So you have no like I want popcorn, I want mm, soda. No, I no, want... no, no, okay. no, 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 no. Okay. No, no. No, the only ritual is getting high at the top of the Arclight parking garage. Beautiful, that's a ritual. beautiful. That's a ritual. ritual. Yeah. I I don't always do this, but if I have the funds, I get a popcorn with <laughs> arguably too much salt and a diet coke. <laughs> And at home, I make my own popcorn. We've talked about this. At I eat popping corn. They're talking again. They're Guys, <laughs> 15, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. The only quotable I have from your conversations now is, this is my worst nightmare. I swear to God. <laughs> That's it. I heard that. But she called me pretty when she came here right. and got a yes. drink. So she's She fine. said you were very beautiful. Uh, by the way, she also called me pretty. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so Jamie, rituals for movies or TV? Okay. Um, uh, Sorry for putting. Don't you overthink out. it. <laughs> I don't. I don't know that I have any rituals. I um, maybe the only ritual I have for going to see a movie or yes. watching a show oh, is a uh, funny voice. Is okay. that I don't have a ritual. Oh. I like to mix it up. Uh, every time is different than the last. It's almost as if my movie going habits are a snowflake. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> No, but seriously, I've thought about this. In my movie, movie-going habits are a snowflake. Okay. Disagree. All you tweeters out there, hashtag it. Go. Dave Anthony, still in here? This would be so a good point Joe, for you to break how, in with something. Joe, how tall? Question for me? How tall are you? I saw a pic of the crew and didn't realize how big you are. If we meet, will you envelop me? Parentheses, hug me. I think I may know who that's from. Just answer the fucking question, Joe. Joe is the envelope does it, Martuzo. Does it say who it's from? Yeah. Are the initials JL? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> are they are they PR? No. I don't know. Uh, SBU. I am. Uh, I'm six feet tall and. Yeah. Are you even six six feet even? Yes, yeah, six feet even, and I will. Yes, I will envelop you. <laughs> Guarantee. Please. Tell me that was not tweeted by the woman the, sitting in the front row. The long shot guarantee. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll envelop you too. What is your what has been your favorite moment in the history of the podcast? I'm just taking over. Sorry. Do it. Yeah, do it. Do uh, it. I'm asking Sean because I want to. Oh, I have know. so many of them. You know? He I mean, loves I, it. I do. I love it. And and, he and, loves and this is it. this is no offense. To, you know what you know what? I know what it was. I know exactly what my favorite moment was. And it wasn't during the show. It was after the show, the about six years ago, when we drank red wine and smoked cigars. When I came back from the road, we just sat in my living room smoking right. cigars and drinking red wine. And it was right. just a great, great feeling to have just done a fun thing and to be doing another fun thing. Two fun things in a row. Right. And it was bonding. And it was bonding, yes. Yeah. I know my favorite moment. It's, okay. it's happening right now. <laughs> it is happening right now as we speak. And it's still ongoing. Yes. I I love it. My favorite moment, and I think I've already talked about this before, but it's worth talking about, okay. was Jessica St. Clair was a guest on the show. And Great I'm a guest. Huge fan of her. Classic Low Show Pogus. And after, I don't know if I've said this before, but right. after the show, I must have said something to her like, you're a, a hero of mine or something. Right. But she held my hands, looked me in the eye, and goes, there's a revolution going on, and you're a part of it. Whoa. I like couldn't walk for like four days. I was floating. It was the greatest wow. moment of my life. By the way, she thinks the American Revolutionary right. War is still going on. <laughs> Just so you know. No, it was about she women thinks... in comedy. Uh, dummies. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie? 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 That was crazy. Just we in all the last the few moments, do you hear the sound of this, this wind? It's the air conditioner. It's the yeah, air conditioner. it's not wind, it's air conditioner. <laughs> it sounds Inside like... wind is usually air conditioners... <laughs> Or fans. Wind oh, is an external oh. it's like if you weather put condition. If you put cool. your ear up to the air conditioning, you can hear the wind. Oh. <laughs> Outside, inside. What's your favorite <laughs> moment of the podcast, dummy? I don't know. I think it's right now. And I'm trying to live in the moment. And there okay. is something really special right now. Right now. Counts. I'll take Full it. attention from the front right. The orange lights. Um, uh, all of us up here. Oh, Jamie's still going, here. by the way. There. I'm going <laughs> to hang myself. 
For someone that has a, a brain that's constantly Please don't going, hang yourself. This is a luxury hotel. This is the Sofitel. What if she hung herself with my fucking orange lights that oh, I got? Oh, yeah. There you go, $5 Jamie. at CBS. No, this is a really good question. Okay. Is Sean Conroy more like Hagrid or Dumbledore to Jamie Flan's <laughs> Harry Potter? You know what? I'm going to be truthful. I think Dumbledore. Hmm. I'm Harry Potter. That's to your Harry Potter. It's part of the Jamie, question. Jamie didn't even hear the part of the question about me. He was just like, I'm Harry Potter? <laughs> I'm the most powerful wizard ever? I'm the chosen one? Nope. So, wait, does any, do you have any insight in that? I, I, I don't know that nerd shit. Oh, boy. Yeah, you like that's Miami not, Vice. That stuff. Harry Potter stuff is not mainstream at all. It's just for nerds. Yeah, nerds are nerds are mainstream. Welcome mm-hmm. to the Podfest, yeah. bro. Yeah. Um, Haven't you seen them walking around the Beverly Hills area? <laughs> the Sofitel Hotel? It's Luxury nice. hotel, by the way. There's a question for me. Okay. okay. You want me to read it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, please. Uh, it's not and we <laughs> Does it ever get <laughs> Does it ever get exhausting being such a ray of light? Yes. Also, <laughs> also, if Hoddle Dinner blows it, may I have your number? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Twitter stuff doesn't, doesn't work all the time. I'm glad we got questions. Thanks to everyone who wrote in questions. Um, do you have fans talking to you as if they know you because they already know you? I purposely came late because I didn't feel emotionally... Um, You've had a rough capable week. of making small talk, no offense. Right. So I don't know, but I got here early just to make small talk. And then when I visit LA, <laughs> can I stay on your couch? You could stay on my couch, but it's like half size. It doesn't fit a human. Mine is really big and comfortable, but no, you can't stay you let, there. You let strangers <laughs> stay in your couch. All That's the true. Time. I did. I did. I've done it several times for long shot podcast fans. So. I take it back. If any long shot podcast fan wants to come to LA and come to a recording of ours, you are welcome to do so and welcome to stay on my couch. My home is always open. <laughs> As we say in Spanish, see. Si. <laughs> Sean, I, I can think of two fans that might take that offer up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> One and two, right? <laughs> Tweedle D and Tweedle Do. <laughs> You've heard of Tweedle Tweedledee and Tweedledum? How about Tweedledoo and Tweedledee? I am a huge fan. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Gangster Jamie. Is that Gangster Jamie? I yeah. thought it was a mythological. Oh. My favorite moment is Jamie laughing the crazy man laugh in, in, this in any show. Is yes. a good one, and this is from our good friend Nathan Bradford. Nathan, yes, one yes, of, this is a good question. One of the people who stayed on my couch at one point. That's right, really? Cadence, yeah. baby. Um, yeah. And it's an intense one, so Uh-oh. buckle up. Well, I don't know if it's intense. Whatever. Um, describe your first interaction with a black person and how it changed your views on black culture for the better or the worse. I'll go first. Go for it. Um, okay. My first best friend was black. Uh, when I was two, I met a black girl, and I, wrong or right, I guess I was two, so it's not embarrassing, but I right. did, like, touch her skin to see if it came off. Right. What? Not it great. It did not. Um, but then she's still one of my dearest friends, and I, I'm i so thankful for that. Right. Because that isn't everyone's experience. No, I mean, and if you don't have a lot of black friends, try to make some black friends out there. Yeah. Black friends I matter. Mean, yes. But yeah. No, I mean, serious. Yeah. I'm serious. You know what happened today to <laughs> Poor me? Poor black people having to be friends with us dummies. <laughs> today, my first girlfriend, Siobhan. <gasps> I saw that. You saw she it? She just said, hey. I f- you're on my favorite people, so when I look at like close friends, you, all of your interactions show up. Siobhan is the first girl I and French. And it just said, My Siobhan, tongue in her mouth. And it went, Her hey. tongue in my mouth. All Ecstasy she said was, in both hey. mouths. Right? Yes. And I was like, oh. I found her on Facebook like probably three months ago. Wow. And friended her. And today she's on one of those my Frenching response. bulletin boards? Yes. Mm-hmm. Those special Facebook yes. groups? Yeah. French Frenching bulletin board. Frenchers. Board is spelled B O R E D dot com. Because we're <laughs> sick of kissing. <laughs> right? Jo- uh, Joe, any answer to the question? Yes, I made my uh, my first real black friend I made in college. 
He was from New Jersey. He was hanging out with his buddy um, in front of the cafeteria, and I didn't know how to make friends uh, yet, really. And I went up to them, and I knew they lived in my dorm, and I showed them that I had more back hair on one side of my back, on my left side, than my right side. I was like, hey, I have more back hair here. This was here. a first approach. <laughs> yeah. And they thought I was this really, you know, uh, crazy Barbarian. white boy. I was a crazy white boy. This crazy white boy showing us his back hair. And um, his name was Nikosi, and he was, I, he was a dear friend to me those first few years in college. Uh, they used to, he and his uh, friend, who I called Hat Man, because um, he always had a wool knit cap, they would call me John. That would have been my first cast. <laughs> they would call me John Candy. They would, sit out, they would sit, tell me I was going to be cast in the John Candy story. <laughs> and any time I tried to make them laugh, they would both just do that kind of like, uh, this is a 90s rap reference, kind of a gas face kind of thing. And they would go, they would go not funny, not funny, like that. And there was just something about that that I loved. And then... But I do remember a, one very specific moment where in, I went to a liberal arts college in the 90s, and that's when political correctness yeah, kind that's of like, started. Yeah, that's like PCU is about that. Yeah, and, and it was the first time I saw how whiny white kids could get, uh, white people. And uh, there, there was a table uh, during mean? lunch hours <laughs> where <laughs> most of the black students would get together during lunch and sit at that table. And there was a, we had a discussion in our dorm about racial issues and one of these white students says like well if they all sit together at that table then like we feel left out <laughs> and it was the first time I, I mean really where I just realized oh my god like you just you just don't fucking see it you know when privilege is blind they like felt that. it was reverse table exactly <laughs> right and I and I just and I you know it was like an open discussion thing and I just said well they do that because they want to feel comfortable and just let them do that. Don't, it has nothing to do with you. And then Nikosi afterwards was like, yo, Not my, funny. no, he was like, my ma he was like, yo, my man, John Candy was dropping knowledge in there. And that made me feel so good. That is great. Yeah, That's yeah. the best. How I felt you? like I was woke. For sure. Before woke. Before, but yeah, I was woke in the '90s, fuckers. When I was uh, when I was three years old, I was in a carpool with Timmy and Ori Hunter and Robin Billups and Greg Leak. It was the five of us that we drove to nursery school every day at the United okay. Methodist Church in my town. Not because we were Methodists, but because that was where they had a good nursery school. Yes, yes. And so nursery. one of the mothers would pick us up each day and drive us to school. And one day I came home and I said to my mother. How come I am not three years old? How come I am not one of the blue people? My mother was like, she didn't know what I was talking about. She right. couldn't figure it out. Right. And finally, I said, everybody else in the car is blue, and I'm not blue. How come I'm not blue? That is so cute. Um, and she, yeah, she explained everything, and that she was. Took you what to did the, she say? She took you to blue. <laughs> well, I don't remember specifically, right. but uh, I think she probably explained that everybody is genetically the same, and skins right. are sometimes different, but that doesn't mean anything, That's and dope. you know. Right. So that was my later. experience. Nathan, you're welcome. I have another question from Nathan. Nathan yes. is a black... Are by the way, No, well, Nathan, I do want to say officially, on the, for the record, is a black friend of mine. Thank you for saying it on the record. Yeah. Um, you Nathan. called him out one night for That's being right. a black friend he at came, a live he, long shot he podcast. He came to see us at the Improv Lab. We had a great night together, and I made a new black friend, and I felt really good that night. Mm -hmm. You made it a friend, Joe. Why does it have to be about race? Because I don't have a lot of black friends. I have Nathan, I have Oprah, and that's about it. What about... Uh, and Gnarly, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Gnarly. gnarly. Um, Wherever you are, Gnarly, he never texted back. So this is also from Nathan. Okay. For your first Comedy Central special, your clothes options are double denim suit or all leather suit. Make your choice. I'm going to say double denim. Because if I do leather, everyone's going to be like... Who do you think you are? Yeah, right. Yeah, I got to agree. I got to agree. Leather. Just because I like the skin of dead animals. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a huge fan of Eddie Murphy in the early 80s. I'm on double denim. Yeah, I'm going Here's double, why. I'm doing double denim because right now. Because you're a Jay Leno fan? Is that uh, what that's about? Someone's been peeking in my diary. <laughs> what he is God doing right now with me. denim is just unparalleled. Uh, okay. Any, anything what, what else? What did you say? 
I'm going double, double denim. denim. Double okay. denim. Okay. There's one more question, and then we'll yeah. stop. Yeah. Yeah. This okay, is here. from Frank Pulaski. Frank, super Hawaii. fan of the show, Frank. makes great videos for us and he's, for other people. He's he made my reel. He's a right. Angel. Two people that have never listened to our podcast before just clapped, <laughs> <and> <laughs> screamed at Frank Pulaski. Um. <laughs> Is yeah, cool, this, cool, cool. Is there a certain word that you still have trouble pronouncing? Kwaunt 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 I can't do it. Thank for taking the what? question seriously. Kwaunt who? Klondike. Nope. I do think that I have weird pronunciations of some words, like <laughs> water. I say you weird. You don't say water. water. I do. You do not. Water. Quarter. Quarter. I have a quarter. Right. You have a little bit of New York still left. A little bit. There. But not much. Right. Um, how about you, Amber? Shaloon. I. I'm going to go get a drink at the Shaloon. Trouble pronouncing a lot of things. I, I th uh, this is from when I was a kid, but it's like what yeah, came yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. um, I had a really hard time saying specific when I was a kid. Pacific? I would say spapific. Spapific. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very specific to you. Because mm -hmm. a, a lot of people say Pacific instead of specific. And right. Peschetti is And a then really dumb yeah. people say Atlantic instead of specific. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I pronounce things wrong all the time. And people always think I'm from the East Coast or the Midwest because of my weird vowels. Mm -hmm. But I like my weird vowels. I love your not weird, weird vowels. weird, but not <laughs> California. <laughs> Joe, what about you? Uh, infinite. Infinitesimal. Infinitesimal. Infinites. You just In did a great job. Thank you. Infinitesimal. And Jamie, besides made up foreign words and foreign words, anything that you have trouble pronouncing? Chalapai. Okay. That's supposed to be calliope. Okay. All right. I can't say calliope. My favorite word is verisimilitude. Mm -hmm. saying chalapa. Oh, I love verisimilitude. That. That's a good one. Oh, shit. Have I been saying it wrong the whole time? Mm -hmm. Well, there's my answer. Yeah. Um, I also, when I was a kid, would read the word. That means a sound is so loud it keeps you from hearing. I would read that word always as deafening. It took me a long time deafening. to figure out that it was deafening. Yeah. Yes. I always get m like messed up with names in books because I just sort of make a choice. Mm -hmm. And then if it's ever a movie, I'm like, no. Hermione? <laughs> I yeah. thought it was Hermione. Oh, yeah. I, I pr I've, uh, I've pride myself on being a good reader. I've always been a good reader, but okay. I will never forget the memory. I don't know how young I was, but I had to, I was reading something out loud to the class, and I said Cat catastrophe, and a bunch of kids started laughing at me. Idiot. Yeah, and I was. It was a it was a childhood catastrophe. It was a total catastrophe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that still happens to me on like sketch team cold reads. Right. Right. Occasionally, it's just like you make a choice, and it's yeah. the wrong choice. All right, well, it's time for us to do a segment Wait, on the Jamie show. Jamie has something important to say. What, Jamie? Two names that are always driving me crazy. Is it no, no? <laughs> no, you know what? I can get real, too. Renee, I always thought it was Rini. Okay. Because I had a fucking hairstylist. Fucking. <laughs> okay, fucking. Her name was Rini. So I was like, oh, Rini is a, a normal name. Right. There's also a girl in my PE class in seventh grade named Sochi. Okay. It's spelled X O C H I T L. Oh yeah. I was like, Ex I get the yearbook at the end of the year and be like, Exo Shittle. Why? What? What's going on here? What is Wait, going on with Exo Shittle? You really, you That's really the went all the way with ever. that one. It's still you very weird. up on the first syllable. <laughs> Exo Shittle. That's a. It's a weird spelling of a name. I want to. For it's maybe not the first weird, time. It's just a different name. Right. Uh, all right, folks, it's time for a segment on the show that we like to call Parting Shot. Oh. Yes. Very unenthusiastic oh, response. Snap them. That's why. Uh, who's still here? Let's start Everybody? today. Did let's... everyone still stay in the room for this? Everyone's here, Joe. How would anybody answer no it's to that friend, if Julia. they were no longer if here? If you left, I'm in the bathroom. Uh, Speaking of the bathroom, I got fucking sound from the bathroom. What? Good, 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 good. What does that mean? Jamie, what are you doing? I got sound from the bathroom. <laughs> I think we mean? should play it. All right, parting <laughs> shots. Wait till your parting shot rolls around as you prepare yourself to play the sound of the bathroom. Uh, Joe, parting shot. Parting shot is I'm going to uh, uh, be sneaky here, and I'm going to use my parting shot to plug our friend's podcast, which is coming up after our podcast. 
Uh, Murray Valeriano is a great comedian and a dear friend, and he has a great podcast called uh, Road Stories. And it's, <laughs> Don't look at the card. And it's, and it's all about. Uh, I love it. I listen to it all the time. What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about uh, stand-up comics telling road, st- you know, stories from the road, and it's an excellent podcast. Um, what else did I want to say? Uh, I get. Um, uh, 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 now I'm blanking. I've, I've been drinking apple pie moonshine all night. Um, but I, you know For what? Forty-five minutes. You know what? I'll say this much. Um, there's something about the podcast fan that is really both um, emotionally touching and uh, a little frightening to personal So boundaries. we're going back down again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, th- th- there's a guy in the front row, Bart. His name is Bart. <laughs> and, and, I, and I ran into Bart in the hallway. And again, he reacted in a way where it was like, I mean, I felt like one of the fucking Beatles. He was like, he couldn't even talk. He was like holding his head and his eyes were bugging out. And it was like, it's amazing to be a part of something where, you know, in this town every day, you can think of yourself as a, just a total fucking failure. I love lo- Jaded Hollywood loser. Joe. Yeah, you know, it's like... In this town like, every day, you can think of yourself as a total I, I, fucking I, I, failure. I, 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 He's you an old time failure. Yeah, yes. I'm on my way out. You I know. was driving down Sunset <laughs> Boulevard. I sent a Facebook message to someone who got a series on True TV and they haven't gotten back to me yet. I mean, stuff like that, you know, where you're like, this, this, is, this is all going to end badly. And then you can have one bearded doppelganger of a guy... <laughs> come across your path and 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 look at you like you actually mean something and i just want to say that's a, a great feeling and i thank you bart for coming to this festival and i thank all of you for coming yeah to this festival. give yourselves a hand thanks guys and stay around for mary valeriano's road stories podcast excellent podcast thank all right you. i'll do my parting shot next and this is very brief but i um well two things one is i took a lift to the airport to go home for the Surprise party? Yes. And I Bragging. got in. Yeah, yeah. And I got in. By the way, I took a lift to the airport, $15. Took a cab home, $35. So right. I'm just saying, there's something about that that works. Right. But I got in, and the guy started looking at me in the rearview mirror, and he goes, are you a comedian? And I said, yes. And it turns out he was a big fan of Improv for Humans. He knew the oh. long shot. Whoa. And we got into a conversation about how when Lyft started... They used to do a. Th- they they talked very early on about how the driver was going to fist bump the passenger every time they got that's in the car. That's right. That's right. And I did not remember that. And I was like, I thank God that. that never happened because what a nightmare. And he was like, I know. I mean, it only happened to me twice, but still, it was so uncomfortable. So when I got out of the you car, kissed, I said, You, you kissed him. Come on, <laughs> give me a fist bump. The, um, this isn't my parting shot. You but I took a lift here, mm-hmm. and I had to describe to m- my lift driver what a podcast was. <laughs> so some people are still some people are still not on board. Uh, here's my other thing. They just found uh, the wreck of the HMS Terror, which was a ship that was exploring the Northwest Passage about 150 years ago and sank uh, fully. Like fully functional, they found it, and right. it's not like torn apart or anything like that. Right. Everybody died. 150 guys died. Whatever. I knew about this because some one of our yeah, I'm very jaded by death. Um, <laughs> but one of our fans uh, tagged me in a post about it on Facebook, and when I started looking at it and reading about it, which I, I had already read a book called Terror many years ago, which was about that expedition, right. although it was sort of a horror tale like a novel not a not a true story but about what happened to everybody yeah uh but it also led me to start listening to a song called northwest passage by a canadian guy named stan rogers and all i want to say is i highly recommend that everybody check that song out because it is pretty amazing uh all right is it dubstep uh it's (laughs) it's dubstep yes cool amber um my parting shot it's actually again mirroring Jamie's checking in. Oh God! You put out in the universe that you want to be a conductor. Mm-hmm. I feel like mine might be slightly more attainable. I've been listening to. That was a diss. <laughs> I don't take it as such. I'm gonna. I fucking didn't mean whatever. it even as a diss. It's just whatever. Um, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately, <laughs> and um, I started getting into radio drama podcasts. And I'm putting it out into the universe that I would love to be 
on a radio drama podcast. I think that would be so much fucking fun. I'm starting a radio drama podcast. <laughs> you did? Yeah. What is it? What? I'm, <laughs> I'm still working on it, but you'd be a great lead. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, all right, Jamie, parting shots. I guess I have a few. And I will start with the sounds from our, the bathroom at the Sophie Dill Hotel. I don't... It's just going to get better from there, folks. We're Is starting in the shitter and working our way out. To what, our wonderful technical staff, the ones that help us put up these orange lights. That Give it up to the technical staff working every one of these podcasts. Is there a way I can press play and it plays on the, the main speakers? No. Oh, that's... Okay, now press now. That's a groovy bathroom. This is the bathroom experience here at the Sophie Hotel. No. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, man. This is a fucking crazy Joe Wagner. <laughs> that was Bart taking your shit. All right. What else? I fucking saw Joe Wagner. What else, Jamie? That's a loud bathroom. Jamie, what else? I get, I guess we got we got to get out of here. We got another show coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. We have seven minutes to do what we want with. Come on. But Joe hasn't done a party shot. Oh, no, no, I did. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's the bathroom, and then <laughs> 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 that didn't go as I had uh, planned. Where we're all, you know, praising. Okay, keep going. And keep going. Uh-huh, Come uh-huh, on. What's uh-huh. next? Uh, standing ovation. I don't know why I expected. A, well, I, I expected a standing ovation for the sounds of a bathroom. Um, I, I, I love you all. What is that shit? It's the strings for the... Oh, the glow sticks. Yeah. Oh, fucking conducting. Does anybody conducting. want glow sticks? Okay. I would Jamie. like to conduct a quick song. Oh, oh right, right, right. Jamie's going to conduct. This is but ch- no, your song? No, no, do your thing. Do your thing. This, no, this I'm will, not going to conduct. Joe. This no, will no, take no, us no. out. No, Jamie has a song. Does anyone in this audience feel confident enough to come up here and share a, a word no. of wisdom? <laughs> Something oh, that you've boy. learned in your life um, that you would like to impart to everyone in this audience. No, no one does. <laughs> Not one person here wants to impart one word of wisdom. No, so. you got to do it yourself, Jamie. Dave You're on Anthony. the spot. Give us a oh, word. Oh, that's good. That's good. Give us you a word of wisdom. You ask yourself. That's good. That's a change. Give us, can you, a nugget principle, can you, for us, <laughs> just rule distill life better? Distill? One guiding... Guy, just nugget. Find your orange lights. And what? I, I swear that I swear Find to God. What are Find your, orange, your lights? orange lights? I feel this is a, an important theme. Uh, tonight I went to CVS twenty minutes before our show, and I got this string of lights, which I'm hoping created some sort of a through line, uh, some sort of a. a important visual line. experience that you can all like. Don't knock your wine over. I won't. Give it up for these orange lights. I'm serious. Did you like these orange lights? Did these create an experience for you? Aww. These lights. And what about the music? What about the music you've heard throughout? Yeah, hey, I, I got a quick question. Are the <laughs> nothing? Silence. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, there this wasn't is, a lot of music. Anyone in the audience can answer this. Are the other podcasts like this? <laughs> I don't think so, folks. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming out. Have yeah! a hand for our technical people. Yes. A hand for these guys. A hand for yourselves. This has been The Long Shot. We will see you next time. Thank you so very, very Thank much. Thank you, L.A. Podfest. And this was music. more fun than music. I expected. And Can we get some music? Love your some brothers brothers music. and sisters. And music. Oh. And music. <laughs> and music. <laughs> and music. <laughs> And music. And music. That's right. That's. Oh. Fuck. Welcome to the after show of the Long Shot Podcast, where we talk about what the fuck. Can we cut these mics, please? (laughs) No, no, no. What just happened? What was the last. Hour and a half of your life. Let's talk here's, about it right now. Here's the long shot after show. Here's my favorite highlight. The, the house lights came up, and there's a guy watching us who's wearing a suit. 
There's a man wearing a suit and a Hi. tie, and you sat here for that entire thing. And I My fucking love Jamie that, dude. My name is Jamie Flam, and I'm here to answer your questions about what just happened in your life. <laughs> I hope what you are you experience? It's Friday night. A Friday night you'll shaker. never get back. Why are you here? Who are we? What is this? We have the best fans at this whole festival. There's a black...